everybody, I'm Kevin and I'll be guiding you through biology. So, on our very first topic, we have cells. So, there are a few things that we need to know. First thing, we need to show an understanding of the structure and function of a typical plant cell as well as an animal cell. Next, we will understand further what division of labor actually means. And we'll learn three different kinds of specialized cells and apply this into practice. Cells. Cells are the basic units of life. And there is also a lot of things that we need to know. But we are going to focus two cells, the plant cell as well as the animal cells. In the nucleus, it's a control center where all cell activities take place. Cell activities include cell growth as well as cell division. The nucleus also contains chromatin thread, which later become chromosomes during cell division. Chromatin is made up of protein and DNA. The cytoplasm is where most cell activities occur here, and it contains enzyme and organelle within it. The cell surface membrane is a partially permeable membrane, and it controls the movement of substance into and out of the cell. The mitochondria is a rod-shaped organelle, and it is responsible for aerobic respiration. What does aerobic respiration mean? It just means that food substances are being oxidized to release energy. The vacuole. The vacuole in animals are small and temporary, whereas for in plants, it is large, central and permanent. So, I have a question. What is the name given to the liquid in the plant vacuole? The answer, the cell sap. The cell sap is a liquid which contains nutrients surrounded by this membrane called tonoplast. The cell wall is made of cellulose and is fully permeable. It can protect the plant cell from injury as well as provide the plant cell a fixed shape. The chloroplast. The chloroplast is an oval structure which contains green pigment called chlorophyll. And this is responsible for photosynthesis. So, why do purple leaves make their own food? It's because they have another pigment but it's not green. This time round, they still have chloroplasts and they are able to absorb sunlight. When they are able to absorb sunlight, they can photosynthesize and they can make food. So, what is the difference between an animal cell as well as a plant cell? The main difference is the cellulose cell wall that a plant has but the animals do not have. And the chloroplast that is found in the plant cell only. So, do the roots of a plant photosynthesize? Hmm, no they do not. They are often found underground and they require the leaf to photosynthesize to make food. The food then travels from the leaf all the way to the roots through the food carrying tube. Now let's take a look at some specialized cell. We have the red blood cell, we have the xylem vessel, as well as we have the root hair cell. Each of them is adapted specifically to serve their own function. The red blood cell does not have nucleus and it is because they want to carry more hemoglobin so that it can combine more with oxygen and to carry more oxygen. The red blood cell is biconcave in shape, which means it increases surface area to volume ratio for gaseous exchange during diffusion at a faster rate. The xylem vessel is a dead cell and there's no cross wall or protoplasm. This allows water to move through the lumen much quicker and easily. The walls of the xylem are lignified as well. This means that it will prevent the vessel from collapsing by providing mechanical support. And we have the root hair cell, which is long and narrow. This increases the surface area to volume ratio to allow water as well as mineral salt to be efficiently absorbed. Now, let's take a look at the division of labor. So, we know that it starts off with cell. In this example, we can see the muscle cell. When a lot of muscle cells associate together, they form the muscle tissue. And when all these muscle tissue associate together, it forms this organ, in this case, the bladder. And subsequently, the system would be the organ system, where you have a lot of organs coming together. Let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at the circulatory system. The circulatory system starts off with a muscle cell, which is a specialized cell. Do you realize that it's a bit different from the normal cell that you have seen? So, all these muscle cells will associate together to form a muscle tissue. And this makes up the heart, which is an organ. And the heart will associate with other organs to make up the circulatory system. 
And that's it for sales. I'll catch you for the next video series. See you then.